Welcome to Living Life. May God's words give you the joy of the Lord. Yesterday, we saw Jacob's most faithful moments in his walk with God. Hebrews 11.21 By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. On his deathbed, Jacob began to share something with Joseph and his two sons, Manasseh and Abraham. He did not share money uh, making skill and he did not share how uh, they can live long and healthy lives. And then Jacob shared with them the most significant and important truth who God is and what God promised to Jacob and his descendants. Then be spiritually adopted in Manasseh and Abraham as his children. Jacob counted them among the 12 tribes who would inherit the promised land. They have attained this special status purely on the basis of their grandfather's wills and it happened by the grace of God. Let's count, uh, continue to study the process of this spiritual adaptations and how it was done in God's way. Shall we listen to today's passage? Genesis chapter 48, verses 12 to 22. Then Joseph removed them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Joseph took both of them, Ephraim on his right toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh on his left towards Israel's right hand, and brought them close to him. But Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head, though he was the younger. And crossing his arms, he put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk faithfully, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they be called by my name and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and may they increase greatly on the earth. When Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was displeased. So he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to him, No, my father, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a people, and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, In your name will Israel pronounce this blessing. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers. And to you I give one more ridge of land than to your brothers, the ridge I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. As Jacob blessed Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, Jacob puts his right hand on Joseph's second son, Ephraim, and he left hand on the eldest son, Manasseh. Joseph was displeased that his father put his right hand on his second son instead of his first son. Joseph reminded Jacob that Manasseh was the firstborn son and demanded Jacob to put his right hand on his first son's head. When Joseph tries to correct his father, this old man said, I know my son, I know. In Hebrew culture, the firstborn son was entitled to a greater, a greater blessing from his father. When stretching out, his hands, the great blessing would be given by the right hand rather than the left hand. So why did Jacob do that? And we should 
Remember Jacob's childhood, and his twin brother Esau was born moments before him. This precious seconds earned him the first right of the firstborn. Although Rebecca and Isaac received the prophecy, the the older will serve the younger, and then they were trying to fix the prophecy with their own force. And however, Rebecca and Isaac failed to control the pre-given blessings, as the younger brother Jacob had a a lot of jealousy in his heart. He ended up tricking his older brother into giving up his birthright and then tricking his father, Isaac, into giving him the firstborn blessing. After he gained all of this, and he had to flee in the fear of his older brother, and then they never truly reconciled. The actions that he took in order to achieve those blessings led him into receiving the deep hurts and wounds. Even Joseph went through difficult times because of his older brother's jealousy toward him. Through it all, Jacob finally realized that blessings were not something we can achieve with our own strength, but it is given from God. Jacob was illustrating a divine principle which he had learned that God blesses us apart from any merit of our part. The world would have picked the skillful archer Ishmael, but God picked quiet Isaac. The world would have picked a strong outdoor man Esau, but God picked conniving Jacob. The world would have picked the older Manasseh, but God picked the younger Ephraim. Blessings are given from God as a grace of God. After all, was not Jacob the younger son chosen over his older brother Esau? After all, was not Joseph the younger son chosen to rule over the older brothers? True persevering faith knows that God will open choose the least in order to do the greatest. Hebrew chapter eleven twenty one. By faith of Jacob, when dying, blessing each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff, does not just suggest to this effect, but also tells us the event. At the end of the life, those with the true faith continue worship God. For Jacob did not only bless his grandsons; he also bowed in the worship over the head of the staff. This worship at the end of Jacob's life reflects his own life journey. Blessings are not earned or achieved, but they come with the grace of God. God does not bless us on the basis of our status or on that of His. Grace. John Owen comments on this verse, saying that Jacob finally knew how to let go of his trying to achieve the blessing, acknowledging his inner mercy and asking for great grace, because that this indeed is the way the holy act they die. Look at how we are all chosen by God. None of us are qualified to be called His children. But he chose us because of his grace. Let's pray. Father, when we look at the life of Jacob, it really tells us that you know all the reason why we are chosen and we are called as your own, or we receive the salvation and the everlasting life, is because of Father your grace. Father, we are chosen because of your grace. Thank you. What can we say more than give you thanks, Father? You bless us with that, that grace today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.